fight Time to see what life takes me So I roll the dice Look up to no one else But yeah, how was shy I got real power Hebrew is a lie What's going on, brother? And you know your nationality? You know your nationality? He said what? I said not really. Well, we here to show you who you are. Put it to the Bible. You believe in God? Yeah. What you know about God? You read the Bible all the time? All right, so what's your nationality that you would say you... Hold on, hold on, stop. Now you being a devil. Hold on, now... What's your nationality now? I mean, is it? I'm asking. Which... Okay, so we had to tell you that you would be an Israelite according to the Bible. Right. All right, history and Bible prophecy. Right. And our heritage have discon been discontinued from us due to slavery. You seen slavery before? Slavery on the myth, slavery in the movies, etc. In that process, when the slave masters were over us. They just, they wiped out all our identity and they gave us who they wanted us to be. Right. And from time going on, generation to generation, we still carrying that on to this day. All right. So we here to show you that you are the Israelites found up in the Bible. All right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 7 to 6. And Deuteronomy 28 and 68. You're dismissed. All right. I love you guys. You said what? I'll be back. God bless you guys. You said what? I said I got family members that's Israelite. They go by that. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what made you not want to be into all of that? It's for the birds. I ain't for the birds. It's not for me. I'm, I'm not. I don't go about it like Israelite stuff. I don't go about it. It's not for me. Well, brother, it is. Well, it's who you are. Right. So you might say it's not for me, but you're born this. Right. It's nothing that you could. Make that not make yourself others. Only reason. But I'm saying, I, I just don't. Why not? I mean, I read the Bible when I go back like that. And I read that, but I just don't. Well, who is the Bible written to? Who is it for? Let's go to Leviticus 26 46. It's only for the Israelites. Right. That's what the world has done, has took this Bible and made it for everybody when it wasn't so. Nobody had this common understanding of Christianity. Uh, two, three, four thousand years ago, everybody knew that this book was directed to the Israelites. Right. Do the wrong, like just look, look at the names of the books. I, the prophet, the uh, words of the prophet Isaiah. When you read Isaiah one and one, it's a vision that he had to Israel. Likewise with Ezekiel, Jeremiah, the things that he saw concerning the is Jerusalem and Israel. The book of Genesis, Deuteronomy, the second law of Leviticus, which means law of the priest. All of these different books, the judges, those judges were Israelites. Right. All of those different books of the Bible, it has something to connect or tie themselves to the Israelites or the people of the book. That's what we're trying to show you. The people of the book. I read it, but it's still like, to me, I just, I just see something in it. It's just not really to me. I look at it on like personal Facebook. I say something that I just, it's just not, it's not really. Like what, brother? Right. Like, stuff like that. I, but I, do you know? I'm not, I'm not, do you know the I'm meaning not, of that though? The meaning of that word "kill." That should not kill. No. When you go into the Hebrew word for that is "thou shall not murder," because you could kill. Is it a sin to kill an ant? Come on, brother. Brother, you, if you step on an ant, are you in sin? No, brother, you're not innocent, brother. You need you need to kill animals to survive, correct? Right, what I'm saying, but you say murder, but it's like 517 says thou shalt not murder. But that's but the... 13 through 6 through 10, it tells you to kill somebody, which is saying murder, be first to put them to death. That's well, hold, that's, that is, but hold on, that's, you have to know the context of what it's talking about. It's let's go to Acts... But I'm saying it's the law that's telling you... Let's go to Deuteronomy 5 and 17. It's telling you that it's the law of Moses game. No, because it... I'm gonna I'm explain it. In one, it says, Thou should, what it really, that Hebrew word is murder. I mean, I can't kill. Right, me, what is murder? What's the word? No, it's not, that's not all the definition of murder. Murder is to kill somebody innocently. So if I just kill you for no reason, that would be considered murder. 
Now, in the Bible, you had a law called the Revengers of Blood. Let's get that in Numbers chapter 35 and 5. So where somebody, let's say somebody killed, let's say somebody killed your, one of your family members. You had, if they didn't flee to a city of refuge in enough time, you had the chance to be able to get that blood back and get revenge on that person. So that's an instance to where you can kill. King David killed thousands of people. Was that a sin according to God? No. So you have to know the meanings of those words in this context. That's all I'm saying. Because if we go with that logic that we can't kill at all, that means you're not supposed to be eating none of those foods you're eating because they was killed. There we are. So you got it? All right. Let's pull it up. This is the root word for kill in Exodus chapter 5 and verse 13. Rock Tazak, uh, Strong's, uh, Strong's H7523. To murder. Is what? To, to murder. Is that again? To murder. You know what? Slay. Kill. There you have it. To murder. So you. I'm telling you the definition of murder is to kill somebody unjustly. What did Cain do to Abel? But he murdered him. That's the point. You go into that word for when it, for Cain killed Abel, he murdered him. He, Cain had no reason to kill his brother Abel. And, and you know it was a murder because when you go into Genesis chapter 3 and Genesis, or chiefly Genesis chapter 4, it says Cain blood cried out from the ground. So Cain was crying out, and he wanted to, the Most High to behold his judgment for what just happened to him, unjustly. So you gotta know, you wanna, you wanna have a proper understanding. Don't just say, I'm not gonna follow the Israelites. Cause, brother, it is for you, brother. It's in your DNA. Right. It's who you are, brother. Right. You can't change who you come from, where you come from. Right. Brother, the, let, let, let's bring this up. Come on, Deuteronomy. Yeah, 5 and 17. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5 and verse 17. Thou shalt not kill. Neither shalt thou commit adultery. Right, so it just says, thou shalt not kill. He put that up. The word kill in the Hebrew means what? Murder. All right? So you can kill, but you cannot murder. It's a difference. Does that make sense? All right, so what, what's, the, what's the problem for you not believing in this thing? How is it not for you? So how much? What, what else? Because we could tackle these different points. So how much more for the different stuff you might disagree with, but you just don't understand? All right, let's go to Hebrews 5 and 12. And let's go to Acts. Y'all can drop that. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 and verse 21. Hebrews chapter 5 verse. Acts chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 5 and 12 verse. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 12. For when, <clears throat> for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Yeah, what? Ye have need that one teach you again. Everybody has a teacher. You have to, when you come, you have to be relearned. Because what you were taught about the Bible, nine out of ten, it was incorrect, brother. We're just being honest. Why? Because what we were taught about the Bible was incorrect. We had to be taught again a proper way, which made us firmly believe, okay, yeah, this is the right way. This is who we are. Everything lined up. Read on. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. These are the fundamentals. It's certain things that you have to know how to break down the Bible, like precept upon precept, keeping the commandments. It's going to further better your understanding so everything is going to make sense. Read on. And are become such as need of milk and not strong meat. And that's what you need right now. You need the milk. You need your nationality because you call yourself black, correct? You identify with, as black? That's what they call it, yeah. I don't call it black, but yeah. All right, what, what do you identify yourself as? I identify myself as American. American? That word is not found in the Bible. 
That that's the last name of a so-called white man. Right. Leo Skip or not Leo Skip, Americo Vespucci. Okay. Right? That's where you get the word American from. Uh, the man uh, Americo Vespucci, he was an Italian map maker in the fourteen hundreds, mapped out the Americas, named it after his uh named the land after his name. Do you de descend from a white man? So we you gotta you gotta throw that you gotta take that American, you gotta throw that away. Right. That's what we trying to get you to do. You're an Israelite. You were born this way. It's just in slavery. When you were sent in slavery, they stripped that from you. Watch the movie Roots. You ever watch? You watch that movie? You had Kunta Kinte, right? He was getting beat by the slave master, and he said his new name was Toby. Then he asked him his name again. He said Kunta. So he beat him so bad that he had no other choice but to say his name was Toby. Right. That's what the so-called white man did to your ancestors with their nationality. Right, they right. beat that Israelite out of them. They beat the Hebrew Israelite out of them till they took on America. Right. What's your name? My Thomas. Thomas. That's a that's the so-called white man's name. Right. What's your last name? Taylor. Taylor. That's the name of a plantation. Right. Right. So they. So brother, once you want to take back what's yours. Let's go to Psalms 147 and 19. Are you still holding the Acts yet? Hold, yeah. give, me, give me Psalms 147 and uh, 19. Give me Acts 8 and 21. It's the book of Acts, chapter 8 and verse 21. You know. Thou hast neither. You know. She jumped down to verse 25. Acts 8 and 25. It's the book of Acts, chapter 8 and verse 25. You know. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samarians. Right, right on. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that go down from Jerusalem into Gaza, which is desert. Right, so Philip, by the angel of the Most High God, he's saying, go toward south toward Jerusalem. Right on. And he rose, he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia and enough of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, right, read on. who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, read on. was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Right, so this man was reading the book of Isaiah. And it's in his chariot, read on. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Right. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Esaias, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Because you could be reading the Bible, but do you understand what you're reading? I'm, I'm just. As far as I believe, I understand. All right, read on. And he said, "How can I, except some man should guide me?" Said what? Except some man should guide me. So you may think that you understand what you're reading, but somebody has to come along and has to guide you. Ultimately, through the Spirit, that's going to be the Comforter, right? The Lord Himself, through the Spirit, He's going to sell with you. Nevertheless, you might have to have somebody physically there to guide you and show you the right way or else you would never understand the true totality of what it is because somebody out there realistically that he's don't know a little bit more than you right somewhere it's, it's another man out there i don't know where he's at he could be in south america right now but his biblical knowledge is more than more than mine right now and it's something that i can take from that man and i can learn something from him and apply it in my everyday life to walk forward so when if I ask you who is the Bible written to, who would you say? So is it written? The Bible see. Now who told you it was written for everybody? <laughs> who told you? That? Who told you that verse? Who told me that? Myself. I read it. We gonna answer that. All right, okay, that's that's reasonable. Let's bring out Psalms 147. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. No. He showed this word unto Jacob, 
his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not done so with any nation. He have not what? He have not done so with any nation. Read that again. He have not done so with any nation. So it said God only showed his word unto Jacob. You had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then you had the 12 sons, which are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Right. He have not dealt so. What does it mean he have not dealt so with any other nation? You said dealt so with any other nation? Yeah, re read that again. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. So David said, hold on. God is not dealing with no other nations. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Because the commandments and the judgments for breaking the commandments was only given to the Israelites. For example, you got you got kids. Yeah. Right. What, 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 so my thing is this though: when it comes when Jesus came, who, who is Jesus? What is, what is, what's the whole? Y'all just got two minutes. The Lord, I got two minutes for the Lord. Old Testament teaching, and Jesus came with New Testament, saying that whosoever believeth in God shall not perish but have everlasting life. All right, let's go to John 3, 16. Let's break it down. Why did Christ come on, on the scene? That's what you're saying? Well, yeah, what's your, what's your understanding? Well, it's not my understanding. Let's go off the Bible. All right. Give me Matthew chapter 15 and 24 first. It's the book of Matthew. And give me Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. It's the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. You know. But he answered and said. All right, this is a red letter. You know what? I am not sent. I am what? I, I am, am not sent. sent. What did Christ say? I, I am, am not sent. sent. Read on. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ out of his own mouth said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. Why? Because the Israelites during this time of the New Testament, they were lost. They lost their identity. Prior to the Roman captivity, you had the Greek Empire. We go into the Greek Empire and the studies and the history, a lot of the Israelites, they couldn't call themselves Israelites no more. They had to conform to the ways of the Greeks. So what Christ is coming on the scene is he's going to the people that's lost. People that need to get ultimately to get people to believe on him so they can repent and turn from the, the wicked ways and fall in the ways of the Gentiles. Now let's deal with let's do it Matthew 10 and 5, real fast. It's the book of chapter 10 and verse 5. You know. These twelve he held shut what Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Do what? Go, Go not, not into, into the, the way, way of the, of the Gentiles. Gentiles. Read on. And in, in, into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's plain. That's another verse. So with this come kind of understanding that Christ came for everybody, Christianity teaches you that. Right. The Bible and Christianity is two different things. That's why we encourage people to read the Bible for yourself. Because the Bible is gonna say something totally different from what these pastors are saying. But they don't still, they what, they don't say what John 3 16 says. Oh, right, let's go let's go to John 3 16. It's the book of John, chapter 3 and verse 16. Like For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So John 3 and 16 is a controversial topic. It's a controversial voice. We have to break this down. We can't just read it through and say, well, that's what it's talking about. I'm, 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 reading, I'm reading the gospel. That's mainly why it's the gospel. Okay. Let's, can we break down John 3 and 16 properly? So start from the top. Uh, verse 1. Uh, John 3 and 16. All right. This is the book of John, chapter 3 and verse 16. No. For God so loved the world. Right, God loved the world. Let's start with that. Now, what does it mean by God loved the world? So the world is everybody and on the whole planet. How, are, are, are there multiple worlds? How many worlds are there? Let's go to Hebrews 1. Right, because somebody might say it's only one world. So we got to see what the Bible said. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. Yeah. Hebrews 1 and 2. Yeah. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the world. He made the what? He, he made, made the, the world. world. So it says worlds with an S. Right. Meaning What's the world he's talking about in John 3.16? That's a beautiful question. Let's go to John chapter 8 and 22. Let's go to Isaiah 45, 17. It's the book of John, chapter 8, 
at verse 22, then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he said, whither I go. It's like in John 18, 22. Right, John chapter 18 to 22. John 18 and verse 22. Yo. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by the truck, which stood by the truck. Come on, verse 20. Come on, verse 20. Thus, so you have to answer him. I spake openly to the world. I what? I, I spake openly to the world. You know what? I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temples whether the Jews always resort. Whether the what? Whether the Jews always resort. So those Jews, he said, I speak openly to the world. Then he said, I ever taught in the synagogues whether the Jews resort. So it's showing you that the, the Jews are that world, is that world that he's talking about. Right. We don't get, get another verse. Clarify. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. You know. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. It says what? But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You know what? You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. It says what? World, world without, without end. end. So Israel is a world in itself without end. So that John 3, 16, that world is talking about the world of the Israelites. Right. It's talking about the Israelites. Now you might say, well, what about the whosoever? Well, what is the whosoever? Oh, right, but what is the whosoever though? All right. Now we gotta prove that because we don't want we don't want you to just believe our words. We gotta see what the Bible says. Right. Acts two and uh, Acts two and twenty one. This the book of Acts chapter two and verse twenty one. You know. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. Ye man of Israel. Ye what? Ye man of Israel. Oh, everybody. Ye man of Israel. Right on. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. That's it on that. The point is, he's talking to the Israelites. Right. So you see how that one verse could alter your whole understanding on the Bible. That's what Christianity is, brother. That's that's what the so-called that's what the so-called white man did. Right from that, but see, you had a right understanding. Is the Bible still for everybody? According to what? I would have to ask you, according to what? Who, who is the history of? So, so how is it for everybody It's talking about? Let's say you have a black history. But is it for them? No, is it for them? We know it's, uh, yeah, it's, the, yeah, it's going to benefit them. Just look at them now. But... Is it for them? It's not. And the people who it's for, they don't want to pick it up. Right. You, where are you from? You from Chicago? What part? I'm from South. Suburbs. South. Okay. So out south, do those people in the hoods do they want to pick up this Bible and read? Be honest. Realistically, brother. No, they don't. They don't at all. We talk to them. They don't. They got better other things to do. Right. Like wickedness. So the people who this book is for, they reject it. Same thing they do with Christ. Christ came to those Jews. They reject them. Not all of them. Right? But the people who this book is for, they reject it. So when the other nations pick it up who is not for, they have a good time with it. Right. That's not how it's supposed to be. So you still might say, well, I don't know about that Israel. It's not for me, brother. Again, this is in your DNA, brother. It's who you are. You can't change. You can't change. What if God chose you? Are you going to say, hold on, God, I'm not chosen? I mean, you can't say that. You can't say that. Right. That's what Jeremiah did. That's what Moses did. Right. But hold on. Can you change and alter the will of the Most High? I said, can you change and alter the will of the Most High God? 
No. So if God has created you to be an Israelite, it's nothing that you can do to change that, brother. You can't be an Edomite. Who you want you want to be a what, what nation you want to be like? White person? Yeah. Uh Chinese. Uh, Alright, but you should feel good then, brother. All right, the, the Lord has created you to be an Israelite. Right. What you have to do is you have to repent and keep his commandments. Right. Let's go to Deuteronomy 10 and 12. That's why you was created. Why do you think you was created on this earth? All right, let's see what his will is. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Now Israel. Now what? Now Israel. Now who? Now Israel. Everybody. Now Israel. Now Israel. You know what? What do the Lord thy God require of thee? Because it's a requirement that you have to meet as an Israelite. Right. You can't just say I'm an Israelite, I'm God's chosen people, but you're not doing anything the Lord require you to do. You know what? But to fear the Lord, thank God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To, to keep, keep the commandments of the Lord. What is your purpose on this earth? To, to keep, keep the commandments, commandments of the Lord. Read on. And his statues, which I command thee this day, for thy good. Or what? For, for thy, thy good. good. Your job as an Israelite is to keep these commandments. Let's start with the commandments. How many commandments do you know? Yes. Six, seven. What's those? Okay, okay. How many out of this big out of this Bible right here? How many commandments do you think is in this book? Six hundred thirteen. Hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. You know. Come on. So yes, you're right. It's over six hundred thirteen. So we want you to get familiar with as many commandments as we can. Right. So we're going to give you some commandments that you might have not known that was a commandment. All right. Let's go to Leviticus 19. All right. Leviticus 19 to 27. It's Leviticus 19 and verse 27. Get out. All right. It's Leviticus 19 and verse 27. You shall not round the corners of your heads. Says what? You shall not round the corners of your head. So as an Israelite, you cannot shave your hair, bald. Right. That would be a sin. That would be a heathenish custom. What does it mean to round your head? Huh? To round your head? I mean, yo, let's say if we go with that logic, yo, lining is like this. You still have hair in the back of your head. What is you going to, that means, I mean, nobody lines up the back of their head. So what does it mean to round it? No, you good. It means, again, to shave your head. Oh, why? Because you have to have hair. It's going to mention that as we read the next verse, likewise with the beard. You know what? Right. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. It says what? Neither thou shalt mar the corners of thy beard. What does it mean to mar your beard? Cut it off. Or not, not just cut it off because you could cut your beard, but you can't shave it off completely. You could trim your beard, trim it down. You could trim your hair down, but you cannot shave it off. Ball. Let's get the Bible uh, compact dictionary for the word beard. Right. Let's go to the word definition of the word beard. So, I mean, we just see it, so we got to call it. You got your beard shaved right now. Did you know that was a sin? Okay. 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 Now that's when we tell people that we just encounter some people. We can tell they only go by the New Testament, but in order you have to go to the Old Testament. The Old Testament. That's the foundation. That's the law. You have to harp on that a little bit. Not saying the New Testament 
You don't need to harp on that, but you need really to harp on that law. Right. Because that's your foundation. That's your ground. You can't build a house with a foundation of sin. You need that strong foundation so when all hell breaks loose, guess what that house is going to stand firm? Right. The Old Testament, that's that foundation. And all the people in the New Testament, they didn't have the New Testament during that time. They had the Old Testament. That was it. Right. So a lot of the stuff they talking about, they're quoting it from the Old Testament. Right. It's a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament that still hasn't been fulfilled yet. Right. It's a lot of things in the Old Testament that's not mentioned in the New Testament how it is. Right. Right. right? Nowhere in the Old Testament, I mean, nowhere in the New Testament verbatim is he going to say, thou shalt not lay with mankind as with womankind. You're not going to get that verbatim in the New Testament. But it's still in the Old Testament. Meaning what? You can't be a homosexual. Does it Now, does it say in the New Testament, thou shalt not be a homosexual verbatim? No. But where are you going to find that in the law? So you got to go back to the law. Let's bring this up. It's the Zondervan Complex Bible Dictionary for the word beard. It says, a badge of manly dignity. A what? A, a badge, badge of, of manly, manly dignity. dignity. So your beard is actually your badge of manly dignity. That's what you get your so-called manhood from. You know what? As a sign of mourning, it was a custom to pluck it off or cut it off. The Israelites were forbidden to shave off the corners of their beards. It says what? The Israelites were forbidden to shave off the corners of their beards. You know what? Probably because it was regarded as a heathenish sign. See that? So the Israelites, they were forbidden to shave off their beards. So now that you know it's a sin, will you be willing to grow? Would, would you be willing to grow your beard up? That's cool. You just grow it out. Would you, so will you keep? Would you cut it again? Shave it? I mean. Hold on, brother. This is a commandment. Right. What's What's the significant? You, know, you gotta. You have to shave your beard. No, I just shave it. For what? Because I read it in the New Testament. To shave your beard. Yeah. What verse? Uh, I don't think it's saying in the New Testament to shave your beard. And you have some called pseudolithesis. You know what that is? That's those bumps that you got right now. So even your body itself is telling you. Don't shave me. Your face is telling you don't shave me. Because you get pseudolithesis from shaving your beard, you start having those bumps underneath. Those razor bumps, they say. That's your body. Your body itself telling you, keep hair on me. Your beard, is, your chin is saying, keep hair on me. Or else you're going to have pseudolithesis. And it's going to get worse and worse. And it's really found with African and so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. When was the last time you seen a white man with razor bumps on his face? What about a Chinese man? Yeah. That's because they don't get it. It's not for them to get it. They can shave their beards. But as far as the Israelites, they cannot shave their beards. Oh, yeah. And if they do, guess what? The Lord is going to strike you with uh, pseudolithesis. So, brother, it's for the, we just read in Deuteronomy 10 and 12, it's for thy God. God, he wants the best interest out of you. It's the reason why he said don't commit adultery. Why? Because you commit adultery, it's probably a chance you might get a sexual transmitted disease. Right. So he, he's not just saying, just keep these commandments. That's it. No, it's for your own benefit. It's for your prosperity. So you, sh you think you can grow your beard out for the rest of your life? Your goal is trying to get your beard like James Harden. <laughs> that should be your goal, brother. Yeah. Rick Ross, that's it. I mean... Did you know in slavery they used to shave our beards off? That's where it originated from. That's right. They used to shave off your beard in front of your family and push you and call you a boy. That's right. You had to deal with it. Right. So, hey, brother, something you want to take in consideration. That's right. I'll just read on. Verse 28. You know. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. And you know what that's talking about? Tattoos, right? So you, you still get tattoos? No, okay, that's good. Don't get no more tattoos. 
Okay, all praise. Lord, whether you repented from that. I said, hopefully you repented from that. All right, that's good. Now, let's go to the doctor. You eat pork? You eat pork? Why not? Are you never eat pork? Okay, all praises. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. Go on. Though he divided the hoof and become footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So according to the, to the Bible, we can't eat pork anyway. That's his rights. It's a sin. All right. Long and behold, you know it's heavily populated in our communities. The pig. All right. So I know you say you never ate pork. That's good. Don't eat pork at all. You eat seafood. All right. All praises. Come down to verse nine. Verse nine. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers. Them shall ye eat. So you can't eat, you can only eat seafood that has fins and scales, which would typically be fish. But now all fish has fins and scales. So you want to watch out and if you do decide to eat seafood, you know about this. Oh, you don't? All right, that's a preference. All right, but it's not a sin to eat fish, though. Certain fish? Okay. But you only eat fish that got fins and scales. You eat catfish? Okay, that's good. All right, you can eat salmon, bass, red snapper. Okay, that's good. You keep the Sabbath day? I mean, when is the Sabbath day? It is. But according to the world, it's what, Sunday? So the true Sabbath day will be Friday sundown and Saturday sundown. What? Do you know the do's and the don'ts on the Sabbath day? Uh, on a Sabbath day, it's a day of rest. So one of the do's is you got to keep the Sabbath day. One of the don'ts is no survive work. So you can't be, you go to work today? You work today? Okay, that's good. You want to make sure you get that day off. It's a day of rest. Six days, you want to do all of your work, all of your labor. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Nor thy cattle, thy main servant, thy man servant, etc. All right, you also can't do your own pleasures. Let's go to Isaiah 58, 13. And Nehemiah 10 and 31. You can bring this out first, Nehemiah 10 and 31. It's the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. No. If the people of the land bring wear of any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them. And what? That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day and that we will leave the seventh year and the ex exaction of every death see that's so on a sabbath day it's no buying or selling no buying selling or trading on the sabbath day huh nehemiah 10 and 31 no buying or selling so have you bought today all right so that's something you want to ask forgiveness for because you ain't know all right, so you really, you really want to Sabbath? You want to get everything done in those six days. Right. So when the Sabbath come, you at home, you reading, you praying, you enjoying rest. You might be meditating uh, in, in nature. Whatever you might be getting some more history. Now, whatever you might do in righteousness, you want to take time and do that. Right. All right. So let's go to Isaiah fifty-eight thirteen. Yay, in verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasures on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways. Now what? Not, not doing, doing thy, thy own ways. ways. Say it again. Not, not doing, doing thy own ways. ways. Not even doing thy own ways. So on the Sabbath day, you can't be doing your own ways. So what's stuff that you really, really, really like to do? Work out. There you have it. No, on the Sabbath day you can't work out. All right. Listen. I 
Okay, all praises. So it's a hey, it's a day dedicated solely, you know what I'm saying, to the Heavenly Father. Alright? So we got the last thing before the next speaker come up is do you know how to properly you pray, right? Now do you know how to pray properly? According to the Bible. You said what? I mean you just praying in general. Now how do you pray? I just say the Lord's Prayer? You say you just say the Lord's Prayer? Okay. Are right, we going to show you something? Let's go to Daniel 6 and 10. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 3 and give me Isaiah chapter 12 and give me verse 2. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Toward where? Toward, toward Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Read that again. Toward, toward Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Read one. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a fourth time. Right, so Daniel, he prayed. Now, do you know why Daniel prayed toward Jerusalem? Because it was a custom for our ancestors to pray towards the east. King Solomon said the same thing when you read 1 Kings chapter 8, 48 on down. So when you do pray, you want to make sure you pray towards the east. You got a compass on your phone. So you just go on your compass on your phone and make sure you pray towards the east. Right? You think you can do that? I mean, yeah. That's something you want to do, though. That's It's not a commandment. It damn near is, but that's something that you want to uphold to make sure your prayers are being heard. Because we're not from America at all. This is the Western Hemisphere. We're a people from the East. So the East is gonna be the opposite direction from the West, right? Just like over there in the East, homosexuality is not a thing. It's not normal for people to be uh, transgenders, homosexuals. When you come over here to the West, guess what? It's normal. And the East, people, they staring well is on the right side. You come over here to the west, guess what? It's on the left side. So everything is backwards from the east, literally. You have certain rules you gotta follow by over there. The west, you could come over here and do whatever you wanna do. You don't have to follow the laws of God over here. You could be free. You could be an American, American citizen, and be free, right? And that's not so with the Lord. So you want to pray towards the east. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. Check it out. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So it's an order and it's a rank. You have the Most High God, the Father. You have the Son, man, woman, children. You know what? Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered. So if you pray, or you might be prophesying. You might be teaching somebody. Somebody asks you about God. Well, how, how can I know? What's your name? Thomas. Oh, yeah. You're told. How much, hey, Thomas, can, I, can you teach me a little bit more about God? Right? They might ask you that. You might have to be breaking down the scriptures to them. So any man that's praying or prophesying with his head covered, read right on. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. That's what? Dishonoreth his head. You will be dishonoring your head. Now, according to 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, who will be your head? We just went over it. Christ. So when you praying with your head covered, you got a snap back on. You got your do-rag on. You will be dishonoring Christ, which is your head. First Corinthians eleven. Come on, let's go to first. Right. Let's, let's let's go to that. Let's go to First Corinthians eleven and fourteen. Now, do you know what Paul meant when he said that? Now we can find we can go. To, hold on. You really think that's? No, I'm just asking. You really think that's what it's talking about? All right. Let's, let's go to it. Let's properly break it down. 
And let's go to 2 Samuel 14 and 25. And the men, in the Bible, men had long hair. What it's saying is, we're going to break it down. Let's go to it. 1 Corinthians 11 and 14. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. No. Doeth not even nature itself teach you. So the key point is, it says, doth not even nature itself teach you. Read what? That if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Is a what? It is a shame unto him. For one, never said it was a sin. But two, it said even. All right. All right. It says even nature itself. What it's saying is, is a, a woman's hair is naturally is naturally gonna grow longer than a man's hair. A man's hair is naturally is a man's hair is naturally not gonna grow longer than a woman's hair, right? Unless you just grow up and you have different type of genetics. But what Paul is saying is in the First Corinthians. Culture Corinthians, you have to know that what was going on. And let's go to First Corinthians 69. And in Church Corinth, you had effeminate men. So imagine you have a man that's effeminate and he has long hair. That's gonna make it just ten times worse than what it already is. Alright, so let's bring this up. It's the book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit inherit the king of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate or what nor effeminate or what nor effeminate what? Nor, effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind and that was what's going on in the church of the corinthians so paul is writing this letting them know and clearing up all the confusion it's not saying that you can't have long hair because I can show you instances in the Bible where men had long hair and it wasn't a sin. For example, with the Nazarite vow. For example, so Samson had long hair. Was it a shame to him? No, that was a part of his vow. Paul was a Nazarite vow as well. Paul was a Nazarite. Paul was a Nazarite as well. So it's not saying that you can't have long hair as a man, but it's what said the key word again, it says even against even the nature not teach you is it's the self. That makes sense? What don't make sense? I'm saying what if what if you're the point is what if you're a Nazarite? Like Samuel is a Nazarite from the womb. Samson was a Nazarite from the womb. So from the womb, he never cut his hair. I I'm saying, though, what if somebody, right, let's show you somebody that wasn't a Nazarite. Let's go to 2 Samuel 14 and 25. It's the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 14 and verse 25. You know. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. So you had a man by the name of Absalom, which was King David's son. It said he was beautiful. It was kind. He was handsome from his head all the way down to his foot. You know what? And when he pulled his head, and when he what? And when he pulled his head, and when he cut his hair, you know what? For it was at every year's end that he pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him. It says what? Because the hair was heavy on him. Now, how much hair do you have to have? When your hair is heavy on you, you gotta been a lot. So this is something he did every year. He growed his hair out, then he cut it. He growed his hair out, then he cut it. And we go into the weight. His hair weighed about forty some pounds, maybe sixty some pounds. So it's not saying that you can't have long hair. It's men in the Bible they have long hair. What is when you breaking down First Corinthians eleven is going into how a woman's hair is used as a covering for her versus a man naturally not having long hair. Do that make sense now? All praises. Let's go back to First Corinthians eleven. Three. First Corinthians eleven three. So as a man, you still can't pray with your hair covered. Uh, in all praises, that's good. It's the, it's the book of 1 Corinthians, 
chapter 11 and verse 3. You know. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Yeah, let me jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonored her head. So if a woman is praying and her head is not covered, she's dishonoring her head, which will be her man or her husband, if she has one. Right? If she don't, next in line is Christ. So women have to pray with their head covered and men have to pray with their head uncovered. That makes sense? Alright, so now who do you, do you know the name of the guy you're supposed to pray to? That's the next step. Yeah, because God is a title. Believe it in Yeah, people say Adonai, uh, Elohim, Elohim. Uh, you might hear Yeshua, right? Jesus Christ. All right, but God has a true name. Let's go to that, Isaiah 12 and 2. You turn that around, Tim. Two minutes. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 12 and verse, chapter 12 and verse 2. No. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Yahweh. He says what? For the Lord Yahweh. What is God's name? For the Lord Yahweh. You know what? Is my strength and my soul. Go to Matthew chapter 121. So you had a Hebrew pulled up right here, which we studied. This is the oldest, the world's oldest language. Right, all languages derived from this. You have the name of the Heavenly Father in the Hebrew on a tetragrammaton, which is Yahweh. All right, you have 22 characters in the Hebrew alphabet from the I to the Tha. I'm saying, and this is how we can translate the Hebrew name, and these Hebrew names mean something. So, God's name, which is Yahweh, that has a meaning, which means He is or He exists. Same way with Christ. Christ's name would be Yahweh Shah. Alright. You said what? What about his name being so holy they didn't say it? What was that at? I don't know where it says the Bible, but this is the Bible. They didn't say the name was holy, they didn't say the name. Uh yeah, I'm not sure on that one. I mean they had to say the name. I mean you had to say the you had men calling upon the name of the Lord. I mean, you had to say it because. Yeah, you you might have to pull that up if you if you got it on your phone so we can break it down. But let's go to Matthew one and twenty one. It's the book of Matthew, chapter one and verse twenty one. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah. Says what? And thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah. We want. For he shall save his people from their sins. That's what the word Yahweh means. Means he saves or he delivers. Because he's saving his people from their sins. So when you pray, you want to go back to the Hebrew. I'm saying you want to pray to Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. Right. Because you say your name is Thomas. You might be walking that way. But if I say Eugene, are you going to turn around? No. So it's the same way with God. If you call it on the name that's not his, what do you makes you think that he's gonna answer you? Mm. You want to make sure you call on his right. You want to make sure you call it. To, you got you got a lot of titles. God Almighty, right? Uh, the Lord of Hosts, right? Ancient of Days, Man of War, Ancient of Days. That's a, another good title. But his real name is Yahweh, right. and, Yah and his son's name is Yahweh Shah. Right. Which you know would be a so-called Christ was a black man, right? All right, so you got any more questions? All right, all praise. All right, so the next brother's gonna come up here and wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel.